Vic Johnson in his book Goal Setting 13 Secrets of Workers Achievers said that you know to achieve big goals requires you to become a bigger person and you must develop new habits, attitudes, skills and attitude and abilities. And you know you have to really stretch yourself and by so doing you are forever stretched. Welcome to Impact Stories where we celebrate the achievement of our academic mentors and today will it be different from the others will be exactly as insightful because we're bringing you one of the, the giants in the academic discipline seen in Africa and Ghana as well who has walked the talk. I mean achievement, sort of research, contribution to education and normals. So all you have to do is just stay with me. Don't go anywhere. We'll go for a show. When we come back, I'll let you know who our guest is today and what exactly what we're saying in the talk, what he's been through, the achievements, and so of you. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Impact Stories, celebrating academic mentors on AAU TV, the voice of higher education in Africa. I am Ajiman Otredako, and today on Impact Stories, is, um, you, you see, he is known uh, as the Nandom Bill Gates. And you would like to know who exactly he is, has a great personality, a young academician who has made great strides in higher education in Africa, and he's the personal professor, Martin Morgan Tully. Prof. You're welcome to Impact Stories. Thank you very much. Great. So, I mean, you, you can't wait to really hear about his story. And as uh, the, the, the narrative goes, we walk the talk over here. We're going to talk the walk and that he's really walked all this well into excellence. So, Prof, um, let's, let's start with, with, with the beginning. Uh, how do you feel at where you are now? I feel happy um, and excited about where I am. Uh, but I think that there's still a lot to do. Okay. Uh, so the uh, next chapter is still yet to be written. So great. <laughs> Let's then now go back to the beginning. Yes. Young boy living in Nando. I mean, it, it, it's really an interesting uh, story to tell. How was life like in Nando in those years? I have very fond memories of uh, growing up in Nandom. Um, a lot of friends, uh, some of whom uh, we are still friends today. Uh, see most of them quite often, actually. Um, and it was constantly, you know, scouting around the community, doing all sorts of, sorts of things, whether it's hunting wild fruits or animals or whatever it is, uh, playing football um, and things like that. Yeah. Um, there was a real community spirit. Uh, everybody knew everybody mm -hmm. uh, and therefore uh, you were a child of everybody uh, who will try to set you straight, uh, try and uh, um, you know keep you on the straight path. Uh, so. In all, I have very fond memories of uh, my life growing mm. up in Nando and uh, all that, the time I spent with friends and family and so on. Today you serve as the Deputy Rector for Gempa and also a Professor of Business Construction and Project Management. But those years you had a dream. Was this your dream? Well, as you know, uh, as you grow up, uh, what you get exposed to and so on, they were... Uh, a number of things I wanted to do at different times in my childhood. Uh, so I remember wanting to be a pilot. Mm. Um, and then uh, I realized that at that time, one of the uh, ways of becoming a pilot was to probably join the Air Force. Uh, and I didn't find that very attractive. <laughs> so um, I considered other things. Of course, as you know, parents also always have dreams for their uh, children. My dad wanted me to do medicine. Mm -hmm. um, and I already have a big brother who was in medical school then. So I thought, uh, maybe the family, uh, we don't need to medical doctors. <laughs> so maybe I should do something else. I considered doing pharmacy. 
Um, and one of the reasons I eventually decided not to was that um, I am uh, the third batch of the SS uh, system. Mm -hmm. And at that time, the SS students were required to write the university entrance exam. And uh, there were different cutoff points for students who did science with maths mm -hmm. versus those who did um, science with biology. That's interesting. Uh, and the ones who did maths, uh, there was a higher cutoff point than for those who did biology. Mm -hmm. And as a result, uh, not that I don't think it was a matter of me not thinking I could uh, achieve that, but for some reason that was a, a put off for me. Mm -hmm. But I also recall that as a child, uh, with some of my friends and neighbors, we would build these small houses that we can crawl inside and mm -hmm. hide away from uh, the world and so on. Uh, so I realized that my passion was in building things uh, and construction and, and projects and so on. Um, Nandom is also known to have one of the very good technical schools yeah. uh, then that did a lot of things in building and construction and so on. Uh, and I had an uh, uncle who worked there. So uh, we hung around there a lot, watching the students build all sorts of uh, things and so on. So I think a combination of that led me uh, to uh, deciding to do building technology. Also, I think one of the uh, big inspiration for me to mm -hmm. do what I did was also uh, my brother-in-law. Uh, my elder sister was married to uh, uh, a man who, you know, did building technology as well. Okay. Um, so uh, all these things led me to uh, decide to do building technology. Great. Now, one would want to know at which era were you born and what were the, the conditions? It was sometimes are very difficult for young people to even try it. Mm -hmm. How was yours like? Which year was that? Well, I was born in 1978. Great. Uh, November 11th. So I have a, a sort of unique birthday, 11-11. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, well, I wouldn't know much about those times because I was probably young, but uh, when I could, uh, you know, understand uh, things, um, I think that, um, you know, Nandom then was growing um, and therefore um, the community was growing. We. Um, we lived, as I said earlier, in a community where we knew everybody. Mm. Um, most of uh, my friends and uh, their families depended on uh, farming and uh, some basic uh, trading and so on. So those were the kinds of things happening there. But uh, Nandom also has a huge uh, influence from the Catholic Church. Yeah. So there were Catholic schools, Catholic hospital, uh, secondary school, uh, technical school, and so on. Um, so uh, there were a lot of people you could look up to then, um, and, and so on. You know, some would say, when, when you were in the primary school, you, know, you saw things differently. Yeah. How was that look like when you were in the senior high school, uh, where you were, you were matured at more point to know yeah. what was ahead of you? How was the life like? What was true? Um, so I, I went to St. Paul's Primary School mm -hmm. um, and uh, some of the things I remember from then, uh, for example, I know that I spent two years in Primary One. Mm -hmm. Why? Be because I don't know whether it was official or not, but there was this thing about uh, you being able to touch your ear. Okay. When you put your yeah, hand the, across the, the, your the, head. Yeah, that assessment style. <laughs> yes. And for some reason, when the ones I went to P1 with were to go to the next class, mm -hmm. my hand couldn't touch my ear. <laughs> so they said I wasn't old enough to move to the next class. Okay. So I, I did two years in, in primary uh, one. Um, and then for some reason, I don't remember much. In be apart from this very vivid story in primary one, most of the things I remember are from maybe primary four to um, to six. 
Uh, and I'm sure it's also partly because I had very interesting uh, teachers, primary four to five in particular, mm -hmm. who uh, were very fun of me and I was fun of them as well. Uh, I remember in particular my primary six uh, uh, teacher who was a Catholic nun. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, she was very interesting because one of the things we found fascinating about her it was the fact that she had a very sharp ear. She mm. could be miles away. <laughs> she would hear what you say. Be careful. She would hear what, what you say. The second person. Yeah. So that that was uh, quite uh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. And the other interesting thing then was um, Saint Paul's Primary School is next to the Nandom Technical School. Mm. And my auntie, my uh, father's uh, younger sister, uh, whose uh, husband taught there, the bungalow was literally. Uh, 10 meters from the, the primary four to uh, six block. Mm. So of course, every now and then I get to dash in and get something to eat and, and stuff like that. So um, then uh, we went to JSS. Um, I went to St. Andrew's JSS. Okay. And um, what again is remarkable there was the headmaster, mm. uh, Mr. Uh, Rufino, who is on retirement now. Okay. Um, you know, he was a strict disciplinary, disciplinarian who ensured that we did things in a particular uh, manner. Uh, manner. Um, the other issue about the primary school was, my, uh, well, JSS in particular, my dad, um, who, you know, was quite strict and wanted us to do only things to do with books. Mm -hmm. If you were to reach your dad as strict from 1 to 10, how would you pay? Uh, I'll probably make go to 15. <laughs> That's so, serious. and uh, we had classes at, at home as though uh, that was actually a school. He brought the school home. He brought the school home. And as a result of that, I was always maybe even two years ahead of my mates. Okay. So it was the reverse for me. The school was rather the playground. Oh. And the home was the school. Perhaps that's what So a lot of people who didn't know um, uh, my background or our background and what was going on uh, couldn't understand why all I wanted to do in school was play. <laughs> And, that's and yet, I was doing very well when it came to exams and, and, and so on. So, um, yeah, so you go home from school and your assignment for the day is already waiting for you to do. Um, so I learned more at home than I did uh, in school because, and I think I was always playing because I was bored. They were doing things that I, <laughs> I already have done a year or so um, ago in, uh, at home. Um, but it was really fun. Uh, I had a lot of uh, friends, uh, as you can imagine. Um, and at that time, too, I started uh, representing the school in some competitions. Mm. Uh, one of the ones I remember famously was, I think I was in JSS 2, and they were going to do an inter-school quiz because it was the 25th anniversary of the Rural Bank mm -hmm. and the Nandom. Rural Bank. Mm. So I was selected from second year with another student in the third year to represent the school. Um, when we went for the quiz, um, only three schools showed up. Um, and the senior I was going f with for the quiz said to me that because at that time, the understanding was that it was going to be inter schools. Mm -hmm. So he said, when they ask a question, I have to wait for him oh. to, to answer. Okay. If he can't answer, then I should answer. All right. So that was the understanding. Agreement, sure. But when we got there, we, we were only three schools. They decided that the quiz would be individual mm -hmm. rather than inter schools. Mm. Well, uh, I so I, I was first in okay. the uh, <laughs> quiz. <laughs> Uh, and it was quite interesting when we went back to school because, as you can imagine, the dynamics that you went to do a quiz with your 
junior, he did better than you. Uh, I'm sure he didn't feel very good about <laughs> that, but um, I think that also made a lot of people to uh, like me as well. That you know. how, how, how was life like with your friend and cousin, mm. Frederick Yuaku, who is now yeah. the University of Ghana yeah. uh, academic director? Uh, how was it like with him? Well, um, so at that time, we lived in two different parts of Nando. I lived in the area that was called Down Below. And he lived an, in an area that uh, was called uh, New Town. Mm. Um, and there was a lot of rivalry between these two uh, communities, communities, whether it is football or anything. It always was competitive okay. uh, amongst us. Um, but it's interesting that I actually then didn't know how closely related we were. Oh, really? Yes, because uh, he he's my cousin, but I didn't really know mm. that he was my cousin. And uh, but I I think what then also happened was um, we so we did a lot of things together. Whether it's playing football against each other or going around. In fact, and, he has a message <laughs> for you. So let's let's take his message now and then see how he wants to. Uh, what he has for you in terms of life with you yeah. and some messages to, 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 to say uh, thank you. So let's go get that right now. I am Frederick Jurken. I'm a senior assistant registrar at the Teaching and Examinations Unit of the Academic Affairs Directorate of the University of Ghana, Legon. I have known Professor Morgan for over 40 years. You know, I've known him since childhood because, you know, we are cousins and we are friends as well. We both come from Nandom in the Upper West region. So I've known him since childhood. Growing up with Professor Morgan was actually lively because he was a lively person, full of life. You know, he used to play soccer. He was a goalkeeper as well. So it was lively, you know, growing up with him and then until now too. Um, from the word go, one could see that Professor Morgan was going to grow to become great. Because um, even at that tender age, he was taxed by his dad to be, to be taking um, uh, every six o'clock news. He was supposed to write down the news and then present it to his father on his return. And he used to do that at that tender age. I remember again that even in the uh, uh, junior uh, JHS, those days JSS, I was in the first batch of JSS and he was in the third batch. So I was in JHS 3 when he was in JSS 1. But we were supposed to go and then write this um, Cuban entrance exams. Those days, you know, they used to advertise Cuban uh, entrance exams and the good students in each school were selected to go and write. When we got to where we were boarding the bus to go to Laura because uh, Nandam was under Laura and the examination was going to be conducted in Laura, I saw that this JHS, you know, JHS one guy was among us. And that was quite surprising because we were in JHS 3 thinking we were seniors, but the school saw the potentials in him, so they nominated him to go and write the entrance exams. So from the word go, you could see that this was, you know, somebody growing up to become great. He was very intelligent. We have always influenced one another. That is together with even the other friends. For us, the two of us, we have influenced each other a lot. We are friends, we advise you know, each other, and then we do things that we think uh, society will also accept. So we've always done that. Um, Prof, when he completed, he completed Xavier, San Francisco Xavier Minor Seminary in Wa, and I completed um, Nandam Secondary School. But in Xavier, at his time, he was the second best performing student from you know, that school. So he proceeded to um, um, uh, Kane USD and came out with a second, a first class you know, honors from Kane USD. And then he went straight to pursue his PhD in the University of Hong Kong. He has done all these things within a very short period because of you know, those unique characters in him. He's, you know, already he has supervised about seven PhD students who have fully completed their programs, PhD. He has about 50 publications to his credit. He has over 1,300 citations. Prof has won a lot of grants, you know, either as the principal investigator or a co-investigator. He's won so far over 1.5 million USD. And all these things are very, 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 you know, uh, significant achievements. 
um, in 2019, he was nominated among the 100 most influential people from the um, northern Ghana. So, Prof has done so many things that we are all, I'm always proud of. You know, uh, that he's my cousin and then a friend. So I'm so proud of him for all these things that he has, you know, done or he has achieved. So that is such a very remarkable um, comment right there with, from your, your friend and cousin, Frederick. And, you know, he mentioned one thing that you, you were able to join them for this examination, this Cuba examination. And, you know, no doubt about that because you, you were two years ahead of the time. Uh, school was brought to home. And that was very amazing. Do, do you do you appreciate your dad that much for what he did? Oh, absolutely. Um, I, I've always, uh, you know, acknowledged the big role my my dad played in in, in our life. Uh, you know, I we we are a big family. There are seven of us, uh, three boys and four girls, mm -hmm. and he played a huge uh, impact. Um, you know, through the discipline and the inculcating in us the need uh, for learning and, and so on. Unfortunately, he didn't really live long uh, to to see where we all are because my dad actually passed about uh, three months before I went to university. Uh -oh. I actually went to write the university and trans exam uh, when he passed. Um, but yeah, so. Um, I think uh, I was in P6 when they were inviting candidates to write the Cuba exam. Mm -hmm. And uh, for some reason, uh, I was asked to go and write it. <laughs> uh, I didn't really know what it was all about. Uh, but yeah, I, I went and took part. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> now, let's, let's, let's talk the walk yeah. from um, senior high school to mm. the university. Yeah. How was life then? Because you are, you are then yeah. um, had been through a very tough time by losing your uh, your dad. Yeah. So how, who was supporting you at that time? Well, um, most of the support then came from my big sister, uh, Margaret Tully, who uh, around that time had just finished um, uh, university and was doing national service and and, and so on. Uh, then eventually got a job working for um, Shrach, uh, the Commission on Human Rights. Mm -hmm. So uh, she provided a lot of the support that uh, you know uh, I needed. Um, some external family members also supported, but the greatest support came from my aunt, uh, who is my dad's senior sister, who lived and actually still lives in uh, uh, Kumasi. Um, and I owe a lot uh, to that woman for all the support, because at uni, there will be times that I'm almost penniless, and for some reason, uh, I'll get a message she saying, come to the house. Mm -hmm. she, so it was almost as if she always knew when <laughs> I would need help. Um, and, and we have a very special bond, because I think she for some reason, she thinks I look very much alike, like uh, the uh, the father. Mm -hmm. So he actually calls me George, which is uh, my grandfather's name. Great. Yeah. Great. <laughs> yeah. You 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 came out yeah. first class at Tech, <laughs> Comic Book Investors, Science and Technology, yeah. and that is remarkable. How was it? How did it, how did it happen? Uh, well, I mean. <laughs> um, when I went to Tech, I think uh, I was, from my perspective, I was just doing what uh, I needed to do. Um, I didn't know anything uh, less. <laughs> um, but I think there was also a good uh, support network, friends and so on. Mm -hmm. Uh, we also had a couple of um, people we knew who were ahead of us, uh, who inspired us. Um, that's uh, one person in particular, Aaron Anvo, who, you know, um, from tech and up to date has been one of my uh, very good friends. Mm. And uh, we've actually worked uh, 
we were working together in the UK before I came. Um, so um, I think a combination of that, uh, the inspiration and seeing them ahead and doing very well. Uh, and there was also a lot of hard work, yeah. uh, I must say, because, um, and we talked about the support as well. Yeah. Part of it also came from me deciding that during vacations, I will go and work on the construction side. Okay. So every vacation whilst I was in tech, I went to work in a construction uh, site. What exactly were you doing there? Everything, whether it is molding blocks, building walls, digging trenches, that is, and all that. That is, that is serious. And and I actually think that was uh, uh, the best decision in the sense that I then uh, could relate much easily to a lot of things we're learning because I've actually dug uh, a trench. I've actually built the foundation, I've built walls, uh, I've molded blocks. Because, uh, as you know, uh, quantity surveying, which is the profession I, I studied, is about determining um, how much projects will cost, mm -hmm. primarily. Uh, and if you cannot tell what goes into it, then you cannot cost it. So going to those sites and actually seeing buildings come up and what goes into various parts of the building made me a better student and a better quantity surveyor, I think, mm. yeah. That was, that was great. Yeah. I mean, you, you, everybody will have to do the same thing, right? <laughs> do, do something like that. Yeah. Right from tech, yes. with such and as you feathered on the University of Hong Kong. Yes. What, were, what was the inspiration with Hong Kong and how did it, how did it happen? So, um, of course, when I uh, finished tech, um, I was uh, a teaching assistant. And the natural thing for teaching assistants is to aspire to be lecturers. Mm. So I tried several times to uh, get a scholarship to go and do my master's whilst I was a teaching assistant, and I wasn't successful. Mm. So I then decided that I will uh, get a job in the construction context. And that itself was an interesting story mm. because... Tell us about it. I, I came up with my 10 hit lists of companies I wanted to work for. Mm -hmm. Wrote my application letters and CV and everything. And what, came was, to, what was your number one? I'm I don't actually <laughs> remember, <laughs> but I remember the number 10. Yeah, which, is, which, is number 10. Uh, which was the one I eventually actually got the job oh, with. Oh, great. Because I came to Accra, most of those companies were in Accra, and I actually went personally to each of their offices mm -hmm. to submit my application. Mm -hmm. And some of them, even, you know, the way they will talk to you when you get there, it was clear you are not getting uh, any job or there are no vacancies. So the last one, I actually decided to post the letter because by the ninth one, I was so discouraged mm. that I thought, let me just post this one. Okay. So I went and posted uh, that letter. Mm -hmm. And it was actually the one I got a call Great. to come for an interview. It's planned it. Uh, so that was TSEC Construction Limited. And mm -hmm. at that time, TSEC Construction was the best construction company in Ghana. Mm -hmm. So after going through three interviews, I uh, was employed as a quantity surveyor. Okay. Uh, and I worked for uh, about uh, four years with them. But whilst I was working with them, I still kept applying for scholarships to do uh, masters. Um, and then, my friend I talked about earlier, uh, Aaron, actually went to Hong Kong mm -hmm. uh, a year before me. Okay. And then he told me about the University of Hong Kong and sent me the details for one of the professors uh, who was there. I wrote to him. Um, but the thing about the University of Hong Kong was that you could do the PhD straight from your bachelor's oh. if you had a first class. Oh, that's, that's, that's wonderful. Yeah, so, um, but it happened that I actually got three scholarships mm -hmm. at the same time. I got the University of Hong Kong to do the PhD. I got the Shell Chevenet scholarship to do a master's in uh, Leeds yeah, uh, in the UK. And I got another scholarship for the Netherlands, which was also a master's. Mm. So I was torn. Uh, you have to choose one. Uh, but actually, 
I had already started the visa process to go to the UK because I got the UK and the Netherlands one at the same time and I chose to go to the UK. So I was halfway through the visa process when the Hong Kong one came. So what was, what was the thing around? Of course, the Hong Kong one was a PhD mm. and the others were a master's. And I thought I I'll, I'll want to do a PhD eventually anyway. So if I can, why not do it now? Mm. In fact, I actually tried to defer the Hong Kong so that I can go to the UK, <laughs> the UK? and finish the master's. And Hong Kong said I could only defer for six months, mm. which wasn't enough to finish the PhD. So I, I eventually uh, took up the Hong Kong and went. Mm. Yeah. You know, funny enough, I don't yeah. know if you could speak the language over there. How did you cope? <laughs> well, interestingly, uh, Hong Kong was a British colony. Mm. So English is official language there as well. So. Uh, so the uh, Cantonese, which is the uh, Chinese dialect there, and English were official uh, languages. So it wasn't really an issue, uh, you know, coping in that context. Mm. For me, what I couldn't cope much with was the food. <laughs> <laughs> what was your favorite food over well, there? Um, even before I went to Hong Kong, I don't like rice. Mm. And in Hong Kong, Every day you have to eat rice or noodles. You don't have a choice. Okay. So that was a big struggle for uh, for me. But we eventually found some uh, shops, Indian shops in particular, where we could buy some uh, food stuff that we can cook food a little bit closer to uh, Ghanaian foods. Mm. And there was also a Ghanaian uh, professor at the University of Hong Kong, mm. and you know invited us home from time to time, and that. Uh, made a huge difference as well. That was well. a blessing over there. Oh, yes, it was. So, you know, we are very grateful to uh, Professor Bodomo and his family then. Mm. Uh, they made us feel very much at home. Sure. They yeah. say behind every <laughs> successful man is a woman who yeah. had held the fort. Uh, how did you meet uh, the woman of your dreams? Yeah. And how did she help you rise to this level, this, this excellent? So, um, I'm... My wife is uh, Cynthia Tully. Okay. And we uh, met when I was doing national service, uh, teaching assistant in uh, um, in Kane UST. Uh, one of the interesting things was when I was in tech, most of my friends, particularly some of whom we came from Nando, were actually at the University of Ghana. Mm. So I spent a lot of time. Uh, coming to University of Ghana uh, at uh, weekends. So it was one of those weekends that I came to visit my friends. Uh, I was with one of my uh, friends from Nandom, uh, Sufian, who unfortunately uh, passed. But we were walking um, in uh, Saba Hall. We had gone to visit somebody, and as we were descending uh, the staircase, <laughs> We walked past uh, my wife, and Sophia knew her, so they started talking. And as uh, they finished and we were going, I started asking him, who is that girl, and so on. And that was how it started. That was how we it had happened. to go look for her later. That, that's a point. And uh, yeah, long story short, uh, I mean, she's been a great support. Uh, when I went, to study at the University of Hong Kong. She joined uh, me there. Um, also studied at the University of Hong Kong as well. Mm -hmm. and we had uh, our first son in, in Hong Kong. Great. So, um, so whilst I was uh, doing a lot of uh, studies, she was there taking care of our son and so on. Um, she's been a great support since. Great. Um, so, yeah. Um, how many kids do you have now? Uh, we have two boys. Great. Yeah, we will have to hear from another colleague of yours who is a Kriya Banye, uh, <laughs> who works at the uh, uh, Ghana Institute of Management and Public Administration, who also has a very wonderful message about you. So let's go hear that now. My name is Ekriya Banye Ama. I'm the Senior Assistant Registrar at the Ghana Institute of Management and Public Administration. I'm currently assigned to the Office of the Secretary of the Institute. The office is responsible for the general administration of the institute and also for all council matters. I've known Professor Morgan Tully for almost three years at the Ghana Institute of Management and Public Administration, where he was the dean of the business school 
and currently he is the deputy director of the institute. Professor Atuli joined Gimpa as the dean of the business school in 2019. But in 2020, the position of the deputy rector was becoming vacant. And this is a very competitive um, position. It's not by appointment. And it's normally done through members of convocation. So Professor Tuli approached me and informed me that he wanted to vow for that position. And for me, looking at the stewardship at the business school, I thought he would be a good candidate and also a good deputy rector. He approached me also to, be part, to become part of his team, his campaign team for the elections. And we campaigned very well with a lot of hard work and determination. At the end of the elections, he won the elections hands down. More than 50% of members of convocation elected him as deputy rector. And currently he's the deputy rector for us at the institute. Um, for me, I think that Professor Tuli's integrity um, as a, an academic and also as an administrator is something that is very admirable. Um, universities are governed by policies, so decision making are taken along those lines. So when it's time for us to take any major decision, we refer to the policy and what the statutes also say for us to take informed decisions. And for him, it has to be what has been set out by the school that governs the institution. And I also say that he's a very, very selfless person. Um, when it's time for us to do any major assignment in terms of committee work, he puts it's everybody else but himself. He is a very dedicated person, giving the necessary support and guidance when you need necessary advice and necessary input to everybody to see that you have really achieved what out, whatever you set out to do. Um, I think that in terms of growth and career and influence, like he will be the best person to say it. But for me, it's always humbling when he gets to introduce you to somebody that, this is Mrs. Sama. She was one of the few people who helped me stay here in Game Pass. So for me, I think I've had some very positive influence in, life in terms of staying here in Game Pass as, as a member of the Institute. Professor Tuli is a very ambitious young man. And um, he's always after his dreams. But uh, what I've learned in life is that in pursuing your dreams, you may encounter certain stumbling blocks there'll be some challenges also that you will face. But these challenges and the stumbling blocks that comes along your way should not deter him from pursuing his dreams and achieving his ambition in life. So we right back and then that was Ipia Banya uh, who works here at Gempa. Mm -hmm. And you know, she sounded so, so, so um, happy because she's been through a very tough time with you with the elections <laughs> though, but congrats anyway. How yeah. was life like entering into Gempa? Yeah. Was it ever your dream to be in a setting like this? How did it happen? So, um, Gimpa is uh, perhaps the fully, truly Ghanaian company that I've worked for, mm. maybe after national service, because mm. TSEC was a, a British company. So a lot of things they did as a company uh, was slightly different from what you expect in a typical Ghanaian company. So, uh, as you uh, probably know, I, I was away between Hong Kong and uh, the UK from about 2005 mm -hmm. to 2018, mm. although I came home from time to time. So, um, I've, I've worked and stayed outside of Ghana that uh, period. So, making the decision to come to Ghana was not an easy one. Um, but uh, I was made the offer, Dean of the Gimpa Business School, and I don't know anyone who will say no to. Very lucrative offer. Uh, that kind of offer. Yep. But I was also a bit apprehensive because, as I said, I, I, didn't, I haven't really worked in a typical Ghanaian, uh, so I, I wasn't too sure how uh, it was going to work, how I was going to be received by the staff and, and, and so on. Um, but I took the job and I came. Mm -hmm. I started January 2018. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mrs. Banya was actually the senior assistant registrar mm -hmm. at the business school when I joined. Um, and I think that I owe a lot of my success, particularly at the beginning in Gimpa to her, yeah. because she's very focused. 
All I needed to do was tell her what I wanted to be done, and uh, she would carry it through. Of course, uh, one of my biggest shocks uh, coming to Game Power was always uh, maybe I'd forgotten the Ghanaian perception of time mm -hmm. because I think that was my biggest shock. Mm -hmm. Because initially, you go to meetings, set deadlines, and people just treat deadlines where, uh, as if they are suggestions. Okay. Because I will do what I need to do towards that deadline, and you call the meeting, and people haven't even started doing what you asked them to do. So that was a bit frustrating. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, we worked together uh, through uh, that. Um, and I think that um, we worked very well as a team. Uh, at the business school. Um, so, uh, two and a half years or so into my term, my three year term uh, as, a, as dean of the business school, the office of the deputy director became vacant. And uh, as uh, happens in many institutions, the deputy director is elected by the senior members mm. uh, of Gimpa. So I put myself forward, um, and they eventually shortlisted two of us for the senior members to vote. So Mrs. Banya and uh, one of uh, my colleagues, uh, Kofi Osefrempo, essentially became my campaign managers mm -hmm. <laughs> for, for that uh, competition. Uh, we went from office to office to try and convince uh, my colleagues that you know I could do this job. Um, 2020, I think because of uh, COVID and all that, uh, they decided that the election will be online. Mm. Um, of course, we had initial uh, issues with that, but once they walked us through the system, we were okay with that. Uh, the competition was tough, but also quite cordial because uh, these were people I... I Worked with uh, the other professor I contested with was also a dean, so okay. we were colleagues and so on. So, um, but at the end, uh, the senior members decided, and I was elected. So I, I was uh, sworn in, uh, in in July 2020. Great. Yeah. You supervised over seven um, PhDs. Yes. You have over 200 publications. Tell us about what's fascinating about all these times, publishing and also supervising PhD candidates. I like uh, research, um, and I uh, therefore enjoy working with uh, students. Um, I enjoyed my own time as a PhD student, so I always want to make it clear to my students that doing a PhD is not easy, um, but you know, with hard work, you can uh, sail through. So um, most of my PhD students, uh, I worked with them when I was at Loughborough University in the UK. Mm. Um, and uh, as I said, seven of them uh, have all graduated, doing various uh, things across the world. So I'm very proud of that. Uh, and as you know, research is teamwork. Yeah. Um, there are some research projects I've worked on on my own, but most of them I've worked with uh, uh, others. And I therefore owe my collective, uh, uh, the success as a collective uh, contribution mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, and, and so on. So um, I have done a number of uh, research projects and since joining Jimpa, I've continued to do that as well mm -hmm. and also uh, even though as deputy director, I still uh, supervise PhD students and I still uh, do some research as well. Um, so it's been good. Yeah. Well, what are some of um, the projects, like you, some of the uh, research projects that you've had mm -hmm. uh, that you can share with us? Yeah. So uh, part of my research uh, focus is uh, looking into ways and mechanisms in which people working in teams can work better. Yeah. Uh, and also how you can improve performance of teams and individuals. 
Um, so I've worked on uh, projects to do with how do you empower individuals and teams so mm -hmm. that they work uh, effectively. Um, some of the projects also looked at um, how private and public sector can come together to deliver mm -hmm. uh, projects. Great. Uh, given the shift in the world towards more digital um, uh, delivery of various things, um, part of my research uh, these days also focuses on uh, digital construction. Um, these days, in other advanced countries, you are able to build the project on the computer mm -hmm. before it comes to go on to site. Exactly. So that is one of the areas of uh, project delivery that is that I'm passionate about. Mm -hmm. um, sometime last year, I delivered my inaugural lecture as a professor. Mm -hmm. And the focus of that was looking at uh, the human factor yeah. uh, in project delivery. Mm -hmm. uh, so most of my research is focused on uh, the human factor issues to Great. do with how we can deliver projects better. Okay. You have a number of um, awards, <laughs> athletes, but walk us through some of them, uh, very, very top ones that you've, you've gotten over the years. Yeah, um, there are a number of uh, awards that I'm proud of. Um, Right from KNUSD, I won the overall best student in uh, quantity surveying. Great. Um, at the University of Hong Kong, my PhD thesis won two awards. The Hong Kong Institution of Surveyors uh, PhD Award and the University of Hong Kong Outstanding PhD Award as well. Um, I've also won a number of uh, awards for best papers uh, at conferences mm -hmm. um, and so on. And then uh, 2019, uh, I was also voted, uh, you know, one of the most outstanding personalities from Northern Ghana as well. So, um, yeah, those are <laughs> some of the awards that uh, I've received over the years. Professor Martin Morgan Tully, yeah. who say Boza, not Boza. <laughs> Well done for your achievements. I believe that everybody who cares about you will be so inspired from your early beginnings, very humble beginnings, but you were ambitious. Um, some of your friends say you're ambitious and that you still want to keep the fire back. What would you want to say to them with what they said about you? Well, I would like to thank them um, for the kind words, but also to thank them for the support and encouragement uh, you know, both good and bad times, we are together and uh, we've uh, tried to support each other. Um, so um, I'm grateful for their support and uh, together we'll write the next chapter. Splendid. Yeah. So that is a great stretch by Professor yeah. Mark, by Morgan Tully and I believe you also are ready to now stretch yourself because if you stretch yourself to achieve more, you will mm -hmm. uh, forever be stretched and that is where we end today's episodes of impact stories celebrating the academic achievements of our academic mentors and today it was time with professor martin morgan tuli uh, thank you so much for your time and you. we, we're glad you spent time with us and shared your story with us so as usual we talked the walk so just keep watching aau tv and it's impact stories celebrating academic mentors in ghana and africa all the more <laughs>